And we're live here from Dunlap, Tennessee. Sorry for the broadcast interruption. We're back on the air, had some issues with the computer. Uh, right now, scores 24-14, 347 left in this second period. Hopefully we can have the rest of the second half without any interruption. Uh, but 24-14, DeKalb County leads 347 left. We'll be, and I'm gonna hand it over to Andrew Johnson right now. Andrew, take over. And we are back here as the Indians are shooting free throws right now. Jordan Smith is at the line. She has hit her first. And now she is shooting her second. Score is currently 24 to 15 now. And she does hit the second. It is 24 to 16. Tigers have it back. They find a wide open player for three. That is number 22. But her shot is no good. And going down the floor, Singleton had it. She fell, went down, and the Tigers were able to tie it up. It was a jump ball, so the Indians will throw it in once again. Gracie Tate's got it. And she goes all the way down the floor with it. She will look to lay it up. Does so, a shot is no good, and a foul is called. So Tate will shoot two free throws here. Three and a half minutes remain. And our first free throw is good. 24 to 17 is the score now. And the second free throw is also good. 24 to 18, six point game now. Lady Tigers lead the Lady Indians. Tigers have it. They kick it inside to number 22, back outside to Bolden. And now to back to number 22, her three is no good. Rebound, Tolkien. And a foul immediately as Tolkien made the pass to Brittany Singleton. And as soon as Singleton caught it, a foul was called. So Singleton now will go to the line and shoot two free throws. With a chance to close the lead to four. Singleton's first is no good. And now Singleton's second free throw is also no good. Rebound goes to DeKalb County. They get it down the floor quickly. Go inside to number 22. She looks to drive, kicks it back out though. They give it to Bolden, number 10, their point guard. She's got it, she looks to roll to the right, does so. Then gives the ball up. Kicks it to number 21. She takes a very long three. Rebound. Goes to Jordan Smith. And it's knocked away by Lady Tiger. Goes out of bounds and the Indians will get the ball. Singleton's got it. She'll bring it up past the backcourt. She gives it to Gracie Tate. Now back across the floor to Singleton and in the corner to Jordan Smith. And a foul. A foul away from the ball. Will go against DeKalb County. That was committed against Jennifer Thulkin. She was down low. Nope, it was against Ireland Birch. So Ireland will go to the free throw line here and shoot two free throws. First is good. 24 to 19 is the score. Five point lead. Closest it's been the entire quarter. Second free throw rolls in. 24-20, two and a half minutes remain. DeKalb County's got it again. Bolden drives in, kicks it out to number one. And she knocks in a three. Lead is back to seven. Now Gracie Tate with the fast break, gives it to Singleton. Singleton will look to drive. Has to pick her dribble up. Now she kicks to Jordan Smith. Now back across the floor to Singleton. 
And she will pass it inside to Birch. Birch pulls up, shoots, no good. Gets her own rebound, shoots. No good, got her own rebound again and put it in. 27-22. Now the Tigers on the drive again. And a foul called. That will go against Ireland Birch. That is her first foul of the game. So now the Tigers will go to the free throw line. They will shoot two. First free throw is no good. And the second is also no good. Rebound, Indians. Ireland Birch got it. Now Singleton's got it. She'll take it down the floor. And the referee stopped the game for something. Not sure what they did that for. She missed both free throws, so the game should have continued. But they stopped the play for some reason. Now the Indians get it down the floor quickly. And Ireland Birch could not hold on to the ball. They're going to say it was a jump ball. Position arrow points toward DeKalb County. So DeKalb will get it. Quick turnover there for the Indians as they had a big advantage over DeKalb on the fast break. But a quick shot for DeKalb. That was way off of way off three-pointer. Indians get the rebound. And now another turnover. Singleton can't hold on to it. And as soon as DeKalb gets it back, they can't handle the fast break. It goes off of the girl's leg and goes out of bounds. The Indians get it back. Now they'll try to make a play here. Singleton's got it. Singleton dribbles around, gives it to Tholkin. Now to Jordan Smith. Now back inside to Tholkin. Tholkin pulls up. Her shot was no good. Now inside to Birch, and Birch hits a big shot there. 30 seconds remain, 27-24. Bolden has it. 20 seconds remain now. She looks to drive, backs out. And they're going to call a offensive three seconds against DeKalb County. And that will turn it over, and the Indians will have a chance for the last shot. 15 seconds remain here in the first half. Singleton will bring it down the floor for the Indians. She gives it to Tate, and Tate gives it back. Tate gives it to Singleton. Birch beats the buzzer. And to end the second quarter, Ireland Birch from the free throw line hits the buzzer beater, and the Indians trail the Lady Tigers 27-26 at half. And a big shot there. And how about that shot, Chandler? What does that mean for the Indians? Uh, I think that gives them a lot of momentum. And, you know, when, when you come and you're Sequatchie County, or even if you're in District 7 and you play someone out in District 8, there's this automatic assumption that you're just going to get throttled no matter who it is. And the night they're showing them in Signal Mountain Moth, who uh, Signal Mountain is actually uh, leading Smith County in the fourth quarter, 36-21 at their place. And uh, it's, 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 it's something that kind of shows that, hey, look, uh, we can compete with you. And it's, it's, it's an interesting thought, interesting thing to say that Sequatchie County has compete with the District 8 team for the first time in a long time. And if they win tonight, this will be their first district, uh, this will be their first regional win, region tournament win since uh, 2008 and 2000, uh, 2007, 2008 season as uh, – as we look on here and we're looking over at the uh, wrestlers, I do believe, coming out on the court being honored. 
or maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, somebody's being on around the court. We'll find out here in just a second. Uh, it is the wrestler. This is the team, and they are honoring the wrestling team as we go along here in the here in the here at the half court. And your state qualifiers, by the way, qualifiers, by the way, were Jay Brock, Cameron Weaver, Jared Keener, and of course your four-time state champion, Katie Brock, who we are so so proud of here at Sequatchie County High School, and it's an amazing accomplishment. And a standing ovation here for Miss Katie Brock, and it is well deserved. And the wrestling team has deserved all the recognition they've had. They've got they've earned a lot of recognition in the community this year, and they've earned it and needed it for a long time. It's good to see them honored here tonight, including Katie Brock, four-time state champion for Sequatchie County. Your score here at halftime, 27-26. I wanted to go through some uh, scores here in the area. And they're going to beat me to it out there on there. 56-38 over uh, Smith County there, Signal Mountain. We have only have a fourth quarter score here. Um, and that's an interesting matchup. And Upperman over Notre Dame, 22-4 in the second quarter. That's the last update we got on that one. Uh, and also we got, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Livingston Academy, 36-9 at half over Bledsoe County. That is a very, very interesting and intriguing matchup here. And if Sequatchie County can win here, they will be going to Tennessee Tech, uh, I believe, Tuesday and playing uh, the winner of Notre Dame Livingston, which looks right now to be Livingston, or uh, Notre Dame Upperman, which looks right now to be Upperman. And uh, let's look at some other matchups in the area. Sequoia 27 over Hickson 13 at the half. Tyner Academy, a final of 62 50, 66 52, excuse me, over Sweetwater. Van Buren CSAS has yet to tip off. Red Bank Loudon has yet to tip off. Minn County trailing Watt County 19-23. East Ridge with a final. McMinn Central 109-56 over East Ridge. That is a uh, <laughs> interesting match here. And I'm getting an update from Marion County as well. Marion County 62, Gray 60. That is a final there, as I was just seen right here on the screen as well. Uh, Cumberland County, Walker Valley yet to tip off. Cook Voice, Hampton yet to tip off. Stone Memorial falling 66-20 to Bradley Central. This is all women's action, by the way. And uh, Boy Buchanan, 27-18 over Whitwell. Third quarter action there. Also, we have Megs County, 63-41 over Wartsburg. Uh, and I believe that is all the action that we have going on in the Chattanooga area right now. But regardless, here we go, and we're going to get ready for second half action here in just a second. We'll take a quick break, although not big. We're going to take a quick break in just a second. Uh, this is uh, Sean Curlyfield Live. I'm Chandler Morrison here with Andrew Johnson and Archer Thompson for TSS and Radio. We'll be right back. I'm Martin Luther King, you will be Corella. 
I'll be the king, you're my queen forever. I had a small taste of it, I'm a fiend for heaven. Now let me have you, I love you, don't you know that? Goodbye, letter written in my notepad. It was signed by you, you really wrote that. P.S. I ain't never gonna come back. Baby, look, I know we had our differences, but I've been thinking hard. I'm tired of leaving voicemails, why don't you ever call? I've been working on a car ever since you've been gone, and if it ever starts, I'ma find where you are. That made me insane Do you feel good about yourself? What you think is a game? I've been done to everything Except the pain I was tamed It's like I only take cash Cause I feel like I can't change I can see you no more No matter how hard I try How hard I try and I can deal with that It makes me feel alive Feel They can talk, they can put me in the labels They were watching when I was on the tables When I was hiding nighttime, providing the aim I'm telling you I nearly killed myself Handguns on my tip while I wanted to stop I really felt there was no life left You tainted my soul, is that what you want? You're the only one I really ever had You were my first, I'll make you my last Remember, we were filling to the top of the glass To let the whole night pass but enough of the past, we've been apart for a while, like I can loosen my grasp. I'm a student to prove when I'm pushing past all the rest. Now I'm choosing my path. I can see you no more, no matter how hard I try. How hard I try. I can deal with that, it makes me feel alive. Feel alive. And we're back here at Sequatchie County High School for the second half of the DeKalb County Tigers and the Sequatchie County Lady Indians. And to start the half, DeKalb County will start with it. They get it down the floor and a foul called on the cab. So the Indians will have it now. They inbound. Get it to Singleton. Now to Ireland Birch. Now on down the floor to Jordan Smith. She nearly loses it. Got the ball back. Now she'll dribble around. Continue around. Give it to Thulkin. And her shot was no good. Rebound to Cap County. 27-26 is your score. The Cap County leads. Now they've got the ball again. They kick it to number 33 outside. Now to Bolden. She's guarded by Singleton. She looks to pass and does. Gives it to number 21. And now Bolden gets it back. She kicks it outside to number one. 
Now to number 33 and now back to Bolden. Now they give it inside to number 12. She tries to drive in on Ireland Birch. Birch is about a foot taller than her. Now they give it to number 21 and back to number 12 and now across the floor to Bolding again. Bolding travels with it. So another turnover for DeKalb County. And the Indians bring it back down the floor again. Give it to Gracie Tate and now to Singleton. They get it inside to Thulkin. And Thulkin can't handle it. Goes out of bounds and another turnover for the Indians. Now the Cabs got it once again. They get it all the way down the floor. Bolding. Drove in, put a layup. The shot was no good. But they're going to say the foul was before the shot, so there will be no free throws. They'll throw it in. They look to get it thrown in. They do get it number 14, and she puts a quick layup in. That is Chew of DeKalb County. Now Singleton has it again for the Indians. She finds Gracie Tate on the wing. Now Singleton gets it back, pulls up for three, and it's good. Game is now tied, 29-29. Five and a half minutes remain now. And on DeKalb County's possession, they get it in. That was Chu driving, put up a shot, and a foul was called. Goes against Ireland Birch. That is her third foul of the night. And the referees are meeting to discuss something here. Whatever it was, they decided on it. And now Chu is shooting two free throws for DeKalb County. Her first is good. Now she looks to shoot a second. And that one rolls in. And the Indians will inbound now. They get it into Singleton. Singleton gives it to Birch. Birch back to Singleton, and Singleton will bring it across half court. She gives it to Gracie Tate. Now back to Singleton. And a foul called against DeKalb County away from the ball. Indians will inbound under their goal. They get it in to Gracie Tate. Tate kicks it across the floor to Jordan Smith. Smith puts a three up. It's no good. Rebound to Cab County. They push it down the floor. And they get a quick lay in. That was Bolding for the layup. Singleton pushes the ball down the floor now to Jordan Smith. She gives it back to Singleton. And now they'll set the offense up. Gracie Tate's got it now. Now back across the floor to Brittany Singleton. Now inside to Birch. And Birch gets a lay in. 33-31, four minutes to play. Tigers have it again. This is Bolding, kicks it out to number 33 of DeKalb County. Her shot is no good, rebound Ireland Birch. And Birch was fouled on the rebound. So now the Indians will throw it in. They get it in, now Singleton's got it. She'll bring it down the floor. They give it to Gracie Tate, now back to Singleton. Now in the corner to Jordan Smith. Smith 
Shoots a three and it's good. And now the Indians lead for the first time tonight. 34-33. Now DeKalb County will look to drive. Bolding has it. She looks across the lane, finds number 12. Her layup is no good. Indians rebound. That is Dolkin with the rebound. Now the Indians have it. Singleton gives it to Gracie Tate. Now back to Singleton. She'll pull up for three, and that's good. 37-33 is the score. Now Bolding on the fast break. Her shot is no good. Birch with the rebound. And the ball is deflected off of DeKalb County. Indians will throw it in again. 3.04 to play. 37-33, Indians lead by four. Now Brittany Singleton's got it for the Indians. Gives it to Gracie Tate. And now back to Brittany Singleton. Singleton looks to drive. Does and then turns around. And Singleton stepped on the baseline. So a turnover for Sequatchie County. Gives the Tigers the ball once again. And now Chu of DeKalb County looks to drive, does and scores. 37-35, two point lead. Singleton's got it again for the Indians. Gives it to Jordan Smith in the corner. Smith gives it inside to Thulkin. Thulkin back outside to Gracie Tate and Tate's layup is no good. Thulkin though, puts in her own. And her layup makes it 39-35. Two minutes remain. Chew on the fast break. Misses again of DeKalb County. Now on the fast break for the Indians. Gracie Tate put up a three. It was an air ball. And the rebound did go to DeKalb County. And it was deflected off an Indian player. So DeKalb County will inbound, and they do, they get it in. They get it down the floor, and now Chu with it once again, has her shot blocked by, I believe that was Ireland Birch. Now on the fast break, and another careless mistake. Gracie Tate lost the ball, it came out of her hand, went out of bounds, and DeKalb County gets it back once again. Now the Tigers have it, Bolding. Gives it inside the Chew once again. And this time it was number 33 with a shot. Her shot was no good, rebound was tied up. They're gonna say a jump ball between Ireland Birch and I believe that was number 33 of DeKalb County. Possession arrow points towards Sequatchie County so they get the ball. And a timeout called for Sequatchie County. So with a minute 10 to play, Indians lead 39-35. How about the run here in the third quarter, Archer? Andrew, both teams are doing very well. Sequatchie actually is playing better stats-wise than the Cab is. They are they have a higher percentage across the board, more rebounds, and less personal fouls. But they, the reason the score is not you know, a bigger gap right now is because they're just not taking as many shots as the Cab is. But when they are, they're making them a lot more often. So I do believe that the Indians have a uh, very good chance of pulling out with a win tonight because they were playing very well. Overall, it's a close game, and it's very fun to watch. So I, I've been very impressed so far tonight. And coming out of the timeout, Indians will inbound. They get it into Jordan Smith. And Smith will look to drive. And then she kicks it back out to Gracie Tate. Now Singleton has it. She spins around, drives. And a foul goes against DeKalb County. 
So the Indians will inbound. Singleton gets it into Ireland Birch. Birch gives it to Gracie Tate. Tate drives and put a layup in. But they're going to say is a floor foul. So the Indians will inbound once again. And on the inbound, Indians get a quick shot. Jennifer Thulkin with a quick lay-in. And now on the other end, Chew of DeKalb County with the drive and shot. Shot is no good and a foul called. Foul goes against Ireland Birch. That is her fourth. And the free throw is good. 36 to 41, Indians lead. 27 seconds remain in the third quarter. And Chew's second free throw is good. Jordan Smith pushes the ball down the floor, gives it to Gracie Tate. And Tate gave the ball away, but they're gonna call a foul right before she did so. So a lucky play there for the Indians. And they will keep the ball. They get it into Birch on the inbound. Birch dribbles around, gives it to Jordan Smith. 12 seconds remain, Singleton's got it. They've got six seconds. Singleton looks to pull up and she gives it to Jordan Smith and Jordan Smith was too late. So at the end of the third quarter, the score is 41-37. Indians lead by four. Archer. What do you think this fourth quarter is going to be like? Well, Andrew, I think it's going to be a very close first quarter. Like I said, the Lady Indians stat-wise are doing a little bit better, but the scores are remaining very close. It's a good tie game. Uh, both teams are playing their hearts out. They really both want this win tonight. And so I think this fourth quarter is going to be a, uh, a showdown to see who can, has the most heart and who's going to come here for the win. Oh, again, uh, I do want to announce that the FCA is having a family movie night at 5 o'clock Central Time on February 27th. Uh, they'll be showing Woodlawn. It is free to everyone, uh, free to the community, and there will be pizza and drinks. And we are ready to start the fourth quarter. The Cab County will start out with the ball. They get it in. That is Chu driving. She kicks it out to Bolding for three. Her shot is no good. Rebound Jennifer Thulkin. Indians bring it down the floor. Gracie Tate's got it. She looks to give the ball up. Now she drives. Gives it to Thulkin in the corner. And now back across the floor to Birch. Now Jordan Smith has it. She looks to drive in, drives, and then turns around and backs out. Now she'll drive in again, turns around and backs out. And they're going to say a foul. Against Jordan Smith, a push off. So that'll be a turnover for the Indians. Now Chew on the fast break again for DeKalb County. She drove right down the middle. They're gonna say is a floor foul before the shot. So DeKalb inbounds again under their own goal. They kick it inside to Chew once again and their shot is good this time. 41 to 39 is the score. Lady Indians have it. Singleton on the quick pull up, and that is good. 
43-39. Seven minutes remain. Now Chu of DeKalb County looks to drive, kicks it to number 33. And she hits a three. And now a timeout called with DeKalb County. And now the score is 43-42, a one-point game once again. Andrew, it's getting down to the wire now. Like I said, both teams are playing very, very well. What are you, uh, what are you expecting to see in the next six minutes or so? Well, it'll be re really interesting to see how the Lady Indians play here in the next seven minutes as Ireland Birch is playing in foul trouble. Once again, she has four fouls. One more knocks her out of the game. Indians are in the bonus. Any more fouls, they go to the free throw line. And DeKalb County, Sequatchie County has one more to give before DeKalb goes to the line for the rest of the night. You know, I will say what is interesting is uh, Birch is our lead scorer tonight, and she's not usually a lead scorer um, just due to her position in play. And now after the timeout, the Indians have it. Singleton takes it down the floor, gives it to Jordan Smith. Smith is fouled. She will go the line. And she will go the line for a one and one this time. And Jordan's first free throw is good. And now the second free throw for Jordan Smith is also good. Forty-five, forty-two, three-point lead for Sequatchie County. And now the cab will bring it down the floor once again. They give it to Chu. She kicks it back out to Bolding. And now across the floor to number thirty-three. And they're going to call a off-the-ball foul on Gracie Tate. So now the cab will inbound. They nearly throw it away. And another foul called against Gracie Tate. So that does now send the Cab County to the line. They are in the bonus. This is a one and one from Chew. And she puts the first free throw in. 45, 43, six, and six minutes and 17 seconds remain. Second free throw is no good. And a jump ball called. Indians ball. As the rebound was tied up between Jordan Smith, and I believe that was number 21 Robinson that tied it up. So the Indians have it now. Singleton brings it down the floor. She looks to pass. Gives it to Jordan Smith. Jordan Smith drives to the right side. Gives it to Gracie Tate. Tate gives it inside to Birch, and Birch gets a layup to fall. And now DeKalb drives quickly. Chew right down the lane. No good on the layup. Thulkin with the rebound. Indians bring it the other way. Singleton's got it. Now Jordan Smith with it. She drives. Goes around the side, spins around, gives it to Thulkin. And Thulkin with another layup. 49-43, largest lead of the game for the Indians. And just like that, Panther of DeKalb County knocks in a quick three. And now 
The Indians have it. Jordan Smith has it. She's looking to run the clock. Oh, now she gets them. She caught the DeKalb County player off guard, but another one stepped in. Nearly had a wide open lane. Has to give it up. So now Gracie Tate's got it. Gracie looks to drive. Does. And has her shot blocked. And on a fast break, that is two of DeKalb County with a lay-in. Now the Indians have it. They'll bring it the other way. Singleton's got it. Gives it to Jordan Smith. And Smith is called for a foul. So DeKalb County will get the ball back. Another turnover for the Indians. And now the referees will get together and discuss this once again. And they will. Get back to the game here. And now a timeout called to Cab County. So Archer, we saw a big run for the Indians, but now that lead has evaporated rather quickly here. Big turn of events. It, it sure has been, Andrew. I, I find it interesting just, you know, watching the faces of the girls going back and forth. Yeah, I can see it on both teams. The kind of, I don't want to call it stress, but just that intensity on them because they both are fighting really hard right now to keep the lead or regain the lead. And, I mean, I, I, I find it interesting about basketball compared to football, what I'm used to. You can actually watch the faces of the players and get an idea how they're feeling and what, how they feel the game is going. With four minutes Man. left in the game now. It ought to be a uh, interesting last little bit. And DeKalb County gets the ball coming out of the timeout. Bolding has it. Four minutes to play. She gives it to Chu, and Chu misses a wide open layup. And now Singleton will bring it the other way. Gives it to Jordan Smith. And now back to Singleton. Singleton will look to drive. Does and turns around. Now she gives it to Birch. Birch looked to shoot, had it stolen. And DeKalb County goes the other way. Bolding for three. And that shot is good. DeKalb leads again. Now Singleton looks to drive, gives it to Jordan Smith. Jordan gives it inside to Birch, and Birch has it knocked away. Goes out of bounds. Indians will keep it. Indians will inbound under their own goal. They get it into Birch. Birch gives it to Jordan Smith. And now into the corner to Singleton. Singleton for three, and it's good. Indians lead 52-51, three minutes to play. Now across the Florida Panther. Her three is no good. Rebound, DeKalb County. And the ball stolen by Thulkin. Singleton's got it now. She gets it across half court. Jordan Smith's got it. Gives it to Singleton. And now to Gracie Tate. Now they look to run some clock. Now Tate's got it again. She gave it to Thulkin and got it back. Now Tate drives and dribbles off her foot. Out of bounds. Off the Indians. And DeKalb County has it once again. They trail by one. Two drives and travels. Indians get the ball back once again. 2.14 to play. 
52-51. Singleton throws it into Gracie Tate. Tate's ahead of the defense, but she stops and a timeout called Sequatchie County. Archer, this game's shaping up to have a really good finish here. They sure are. Both teams are, I can tell they're under pressure. Uh, they're kind of, I won't say they're making simple mistakes, but they're just under all this pressure. I can tell there's like little small stuff there. Not quite setting up right on both sides of the ball. So uh, you just got to keep your mind right in these last two minutes. And any sport, that last little bit is the hardest time to keep your mind in the game and to not mess up. And we only have two minutes and nine seconds remaining. 52-51, Indians lead. It's the Quachi County basketball. They'll throw it in right in front of the scoring table. And they get it into Gracie Tate. Tate. Looks to drive, nearly loses the ball. Now gives it to Singleton. Singleton will give it up to Thulkin. Now to Gracie Tate. And now inside to Thulkin. Her shot is no good. Gets her on rebound and puts it back in. Indians lead by three. Now Bolding of DeKalb County has the ball. Guarded by Jordan Smith. Now she gives it to Chew. Chew drives, shoots. Shot is no good. Rebound, Thulkin. <laughs> Indians have it again. Singleton will bring it down the floor. And she is fouled. Singleton will shoot a one and one. And Singleton getting ready for her first free throw. A minute 22 to play. Lead is three. First free throw is good. And now she'll shoot her second free throw. 55-51. Second is in and out. DeKalb's got it once again. Bolding drives down the floor, kicks it into the corner to number 33. And she hits a three. That is Pedigo of DeKalb County. Cuts the lead back to one. What a close game, Andrew. What a close game. It's exciting to watch. Every fan in here is excited. Most of them are standing up, cheering their teams on. It's great. The... Uh, Indians are definitely digging in now, trying to extend this lead a little bit. Because it's never very comfortable to always have a one point lead. That can change very quickly. So, although I, I dare say the Indians might come out with uh, 60 points tonight, they are shooting at 50% uh, right now. That's really, really great. And now, coming out of the timeout, Indians have it. Singleton throws it in to Jordan Smith. Smith has it poked away. Stays with the Indians, though. Singleton to throw it in. She gets it into Birch. And Birch is fouled. So Ireland Birch will go the line. She will shoot two free throws, I believe. Nope, they're going to say it's a one and one. And Birch's first free throw bounces out. So now Chew with it of DeKalb County. 
She drives in on Brittany Singleton, puts up a shot. Shot is no good. Rebound, Ireland Birch. Now Singleton's got it. She gives it to Ireland Birch and back to Singleton. And Singleton is fouled. And now Singleton will shoot two free throws. We only have 48 seconds remaining. Score is 55-54. Singleton will shoot two. And Singleton's first is good. And Singleton's second is also good. Timeout Indians. So a three point lead for Sequatchie County now. As the Cab County will get the ball once again here after the timeout. Archer, what do you expect here? You think the Cab goes for a quick three or tries to drive it in and foul? I think that the. Uh from what I've seen tonight, I expect the Cab to try to go in for uh, a three, you know, drive in and try to make a three. But I'm not sure. They have shot almost 75% more shots than the Indians have tonight and are still under the Indians score-wise. So, you know, that's a testament to the uh, shot percentage that the Indians are shooting. But defensively, you know, they probably need to stop some of those shots. And DeKalb County will look to throw it in. And it'll be Bolding with it. She looks to drive, kicks it to number 33. Her three is no good. Rebound two of DeKalb County. And they're gonna say the rebound was poked away by an Indian player. So the cab will throw it in. 35 seconds remain. They get it in the corner for three. In and out. Rebound Singleton. And she's fouled quickly. And she's thrown down on the floor hard. And they're going to continue to say that it was just a common foul. As she was slammed onto the floor. Thirty seconds remain. Singleton will shoot two free throws. It'll just be a common foul. Singleton's first is good. Fifty-eight, fifty-four. And the second is good. 59-54, five-point lead. And another three from DeKalb County. Number 33 pulls up with a quick one, hits it, and another timeout, DeKalb County. Two-point lead for the Indians, 59-57. Archer, DeKalb just not going away. No, they sure aren't. And like we predicted, they're going for those threes, hard and heavy. The, uh, and that's the only way they think they're going to be able to win at this point is by shooting a few threes and getting a score above uh, and breaking that gap there. But uh, I think the Indians have it in the bag. I really do. They're going to have to keep up this last 21 seconds. They're going to have to keep this two-point lead up. If they do that, they've got a beat, and they will go to uh, Tennessee Tech on – or no, that's the uh, – where, where do they go on? Tuesday. I do believe they might go to Tennessee Tech on Tuesday. Yeah. 
And coming out of the timeout, Indians will get the ball again. Singleton will throw it in. She gets it into Gracie Tate and back to Singleton. And a quick foul will send Gracie Tate to the line. She will shoot two free throws. And Gracie's first free throw is no good. And now she'll shoot her second. It is good. The Cavs got it again. Bolding gets it down the floor and they call timeout. 17 points, six seconds remain. 60 to 57. Andrew, the uh, girls tonight are doing a very good job on their free throws. I'm impressed by every game that we've had and broadcasted. I've been impressed by how well they do on the free throws. And, you know, several games, that's what's made the difference. That's what's won in the game is their ability to get on that line, stay concentrated, and make the shots. And now as we get ready to go again, it'll be DeKalb County ball. They get it thrown in, nearly lose it. Jordan Smith almost forced a turnover. 11 seconds remain. A three is no good from number 21. And a jump ball will be called. Possession arrow points toward DeKalb County. Five seconds remain. And a timeout called Sequatchie County. So DeKalb County will throw it in as the arrow points toward them. So they will have five seconds to put up a three and try to tie the game. Close game right now, Andrew. And it's but all gonna come down to one shot. At best though, right now, DeKalb makes a three-pointer and then tied the game. So that's, you know, I don't think that they're gonna win this game in the next five seconds. They could tie it up, but I don't think they're gonna win it in the next five seconds. And really and truly, their three-point shots have not been very well. They've, you know, they've made a, a few. I think they've made six out of maybe 13 or 14 tonight. So that's not very, not very good. Actually closer to, I guess it's closer to eight out of 18 how to look at it. And so the cab will throw it in. They look to get it in and it's knocked away. They get it in and the shot is no good. Indians win against the cab county 60 to 57. Lady Indians have won their quarterfinals and will move on and play next week. What a, I mean, what a great game, Andrew. Lady Indians dug in deep, fought for the win, and came out with a three-point lead. And a very big win here for the Indians as it came down to the wire. And now the Indians will go on to play. I believe it is the winner of Livingston and Bledsoe County. I think so. Let me see if we got an update on that score. Um, let's see here. And that will be at Tennessee Tech Living this coming Tuesday. And that will be Livingston Academy as they defeated Bledsoe County tonight, 62 to 30. Wow, that was a a big win, I think. Yes, a big win for them. So that and means that'll, that'll be some 
tough competition for the Lady Indians next week. And another district game, district affiliated game, Notre Dame falls to Upperman 73 to 22 tonight. And I believe that is all the local games that went on other than Signal Mountain defeating Smith County pretty badly tonight also. Again, I want to remind, remind you about the, uh, fel uh, the FCA Fellowship for, of Christian Athletes movie night on February 27th at 5 o'clock Central. It's free for everyone in the community. There will be uh, pizza and drinks. They're playing Woodlawn, which is a uh, movie about a uh, African-American football player. It's a great movie. Come out and watch it and uh, support the FCA. Everybody, thank you for joining in tonight. Uh, join us next week. I do believe we'll be broadcasting that game. And uh, thank you for listening in, and God bless you all. <laughs>